Hello everyone, welcome back once again to Spring Realms, our wonderful little patron server. So, last few times I've done either a ton of building work off camera, or I've showed you off some stuff that I've already built. So this time around, I thought we'd do something a little bit different, and generate as many of these as I can in one episode. So, the first one I've already done is like an example, and yes, I'm going to be spending all my time over here in the side eye. Uh, is Fling as a sort of example. Fling is probably the easiest and simplest one that we have here. It just targets a number of players and shoots them up into the air with teleport. Now, it would be nice if I could actually throw them, I could, if I could apply velocity to them, but as it is, I can unfortunately only teleport for the most part. Uh, I could give them a massive, uh, a massive dose of the jump boost effect, but Unfortunately, that would only trigger once they actually jumped. If they stood still, it wouldn't do anything. So we really want to fling them. But what we do is we give all of those targets the tag of Aeneas do fling, and then we're going to have a little bit of target uh, verification here. So the first thing that we're doing is we're establishing that there is not a solid block above them by checking if it is air. And then, from the same person, we detect if there is air 31 blocks above them where their head will be, and then we teleport them 30 blocks above them, where their feet will be. That's an important thing to know, is that your feet, your actual position is measured from your feet, whereas your breathing is measured from your head, which is a block above you. So, bear that in mind. And what that ultimately means, and uh, oh yes, let me just remove the NASD fling, what that ultimately then means is that if there is some degree of room above them, and if there is not like the likelihood that we'll be teleporting them into solid blocks directly above, then we fling them all the way up. So if they are stood under a barrier, so say for example there was this nice little lip here, then they wouldn't get flung because they just hit their head here. It's not perfect, I admit. The uh, the, the more perfect way to do this would be to have a test for blocks. So for example, uh, Test for blocks we want, and then we'll say test it from the person's position, and then we have a bunch of other coordinates that we need to set in, so let's go with 000, zero, zero to zero, say, 30, zero, and at that stage we have an issue because I have typed the coordinates in wrongly, but basically to, uh, test for blocks allows you to compare two regions of space. We use it in the course of the... Uh, the cold forge to check if people have actually filled in all of the iron blocks when they're uh, feeding the forge. And with that, we would be able to tell if there is only empty space directly above somebody. But we can't do that here, specifically because that would mean we'd have to have another command block in the way, so we would need to commit the actual test for blocks, and then we would need to have a conditional there, which you can do. But we have multiple targets, and moving through one of them at a time would be a colossal pain. So it's easier for us to just have this quick check up, our, is there energy space above them? Will they su start to suffocate in solid blocks if we teleport them 30 blocks up? And then just do that. Much cleaner, not perfect, it would teleport me straight out of this room, for example. But, nonetheless, I think it will work okay. So, let's see, our next one that we can try and do is Scatter. Now, this one relies on the Spread Players command, so if we have a look at that one. So, Spread Players takes coordinates, and it takes, uh, well, it takes 2D coordinates, X and Z. And then it takes uh, minimum distance between players, whether we should abide by teams, that kind of thing. Uh, and then it will place them in a random position on the top of the world. So. Of course, in here, that means they're going to end up on top of most of these, uh, well, currently probably most of these regen circuits that we need to take out, but mostly they'll end up on top of different platforms because there's very little coverage between them. So consequently, your players get scattered around the dungeon. They have sight lines to the sky directly, but they are chiefly being flung about with no control of themselves. And that is handy because it means it completely alters how players have organized. So if they have, for example, found sh found some kind of safe harbor where they're not going to get flung into the air, or where mobs can't attack them for whatever reason, then they're going to get wrecked, because th that strategy is now null and void. No entity thus far actually does that, so... Ooh. 
So, with that in mind, we want to perform the spread players command. Now, we can do that based on proximity to our harbor master or the mini boss version thereof, but uh, it would be in a position where it can, in fact, drop you over the void if there's no solid, uh, solid air there at all, or solid blocks, I should say. So, spread players. And then we'll give it two coordinates right well, now. Those are not relevant. Um, and now I need to remember what the exact uh, what the exact words are for this. So there's e. Okay, give me a second to look this up. Oi! All right. Okay. So sometimes you have to look up on look things up on the wiki because the commands are not laid out in a very uh, clear fashion. But here we go. So. If we do that, we need to give it the two X and Z coordinates, and then there's the distance, which is the minimum distance between the two targets must be at least zero. Here we're going to say ten, because it's a big dungeon. And then there's the maximum range, which is the maximum distance on each horizontal axis from the center to spread to the targets. So the error is actually square, not circular. So, what that means is that we take our central coordinates here, which will be the center of the dungeon, and then we half the actual like width and then we can figure out the exact square that you'll end up. This might end up with somebody being teleported onto solid rock, but it should try and avoid that. Uh, for the purposes of this test at least, we'll put 100 there. Then we uh, do respect teams. Uh, this is entirely relevant to the scoreboard and is not going to be a huge concern for us, and then we actually give the targets. So let's find out here. We want region info. Uh, dungeon S. So here's our boundaries. So it is approximately 4,400 there. I'm not going to do the math right now to work out exactly what these things are. Um, and then we'll say, let's see, a difference of 30 there, so at 15, so about 4,400 and 100. Negative 4,400, I should say. And 100 on the Z. So that gets us targets right into the middle, and we want to do, do scatter. The actual targeting will be, do, will be done by a system not unlike the one that we used for the last dungeon, with boss abilities and such, so the Harbour Master will pick the targets and then these will just actually uh, carry them out. And then once we have done the do scatter, we want to remove that from here. Okay. So that we don't just continue targeting at people who shouldn't be targeted. And that basically means that if you get too close, or maybe if you're in a, like, a donut, a torus, if you will, um, away from the harbour master, you will get scattered around the dungeon. Because he's getting sick of you and he wants you to leave. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, so that's two. Denials, the lingering potion effects. Now this will summon uh, lingering potion effects, which I think I have the room. No, I don't think they actually have their own, uh, uh, I, I know there's a specific, like, entity for lingering potions, but they might not have their own entity ID, so, uh, is there, yeah, we have lingering potions here, so, for example, when you chuck one of these down, it creates that, and it's pretty toxic by itself, we've used this before, in fact, we used this in Bastilla, way, way, way back when. Uh, to create a fire effect that didn't actually set people on fire, which just painted and looked, looked like fire, more or less. But what these will be doing is that they will be placed on certain players, or maybe we'll just use, use, use a, a spread players command on some uh, targeted armor stands, and that will uh, cause them to have some nice negative potion effects around. So these are nope effects, which means that they will be things such as slowness, blindness, and weakness, uh, which, which is to say that those are specifically effects that prevent you from doing something. And we might have their effects, we, we, we can determine what their particle effects are. Now, every time that they actually happen, they are uh, abundant, we can't change what the color is, we can't change the velocity or anything of these, uh, but if a player is too near to them, then they will get hit by that negative debuff when they're going through them. Now, we, what we could do is summon a targeted armor stand. So, for example, uh, we could say summon armor stand on me 
uh, with the tag of denial scatter. So that would create this armor stand. And then we could execute from me. So X, Q, well, it doesn't be easier to just do around me. So spread players, blip, blip. And we're going to say within a distance of at least six, maximum distance of 15. Uh, ignore teams. And at E, tag equals, uh, what was that one? Scatter. Yeah, my brain's gone dead. Denial scatter. There we go. Denial scatter. And that then does scatter it, but it has the slightly unfortunate side effect of shifting it up to the world. So we would then ideally want to be teleporting it back down to level with the player. Unfortunately, however, that's not the easiest thing in the world, because we've done that before. There it is. That's where it ended up. So it ended up here because this is the highest point of terrain in this particular section of space. That is the slight problem with doing spread players. I wish you could tell it to uh, not do that, but unfortunately you pretty much can't. Uh, so yeah, that, that would be the ideal. As it is, we are probably just going to have to settle for placing it on a, sec on a section of players. That does have the added advantage that we will absolutely be hitting people, but for now, it's not uh, not very helpful. Uh, but anyways, let's grab the entity ID. So entity data at e r equals three. Leap. No. All oh, right, because it probably. There we go. Uh, okay, so that gives us all of this data, and that should mob spell is not what we're looking for. We are looking for its type, and. Next question is, will I find this in five minutes? Oh boy. Whenever an entity that isn't named says something. Uh, so execute at e r equals five. Blip, blip, blip. Say hello. So we just grab that. And then we have it say something. So it's area effect cloud. There we go. That's the one that we're looking for. So summon area effect cloud positions and then data and all that stuff. So now... In order for this to actually lay down the effects, there's kind of something that we need to bear in mind. We can either give one cloud all three effects, the uh, blindness, the weakness, and the slowness, or we can randomize exactly what they are. So we have a side system that is running periodically as long as at least one player has been given the uh, Aeneas Do Denial tag, for example, and we do this sort of system where we have three options of presumably fairly equal probability, and we check it to see uh, which one we go, uh, we're going to drop, so blindness, weakness, or slowness, and then we remove the tag from one of those players. So it's sort of the system that we might have been doing for filling, but in this case we're actually doing it a bit more, uh, a bit more fully. Alternatively, what we could do is the alternative RNG that we have over here, so we just have a uh, a nibble and a, 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 a niblet and a bit, and that gives us our three options, and we use that to summon up to three different area effect clouds on the players. Now, of course, that would be the meaner solution, which I'm kind of given to, considering that this is the first dungeon in our second stage of three. So, hmm, there's an idea for us. Uh, but that's how we would run through doing denials. The last one, of course, however, is the shipwrights. So, in Far Fallen Arena, in Undermine, we had Moses the Slime, which was a reference to a Fluxbuddy's character, and Moses was able to summon minions called the Staff of Moses. Obviously, we don't have Moses in this particular dungeon, but we do have Aeneas, and therefore we can have uh, the God of Slimes summoning slimes. Makes the most sense. And consequently, we can have the Staff of Aeneas, because Staff was a pun on, like, employee. Now, there is one thing I've realized whilst I was just setting this up, which is that because we are recruiting slimes that spawn around here, currently, this slime has the tag of Aeneas Slime, which prevents it from being targeted further by the uh, slime system over there. If we kill this slime, however, it loses those tags. Names originally would carry over, but 
yep. not tags. So consequently, you end up with a bunch of slime puddles. And of course, if you get too close to them, they will glue you to the ground, like so. Which is a really nasty little, tri little trick, I think. So, what would happen is we would summon the uh, the staff of Aeneas. They would go. Uh, they would probably appear on, or very near to, at the very least, uh, a number of players, and then they would slay them, and they'd be glued in place. So it's a nice little uh, trick there. Now, there is a problem with this lineup of abilities that we need to think of. Uh, oh, which reminds me, let's grab that. And execute at a tag equals uh, Aeneas do slime. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. And we'll summon them one block above the ground level. Okay, and let me just get rid of the Aeneas do slime as well. Okay, so that's how we would do that, just as a quick thing. We could add particles and sound effects and all sorts of things later. Uh, for now, that's just all that we need. And, yeah, but the problem that we have here is that there aren't actually very many things here that deal damage. Now, the Harbour Master entity might be attacking somebody, but they, are, they can only attack one person at a time, and meanwhile it's probably getting surrounded by people doing all manner of damage. Scatter gets them away from him. Fling can cause a fair bit of falling damage, depending on what they are teleported above. The denials are a pest, but they're not really going to cause much harm. The shipwrights are more or less the only thing here that definitively actually do damage. And that means that this this boss currently doesn't actually pose very much of a threat. Now we can buff his health by changing his attributes as part of a being an entity. We could buff his attack damage, so whenever he does hit somebody, he'll deal some damage, we can up his speed, that kind of thing. But he doesn't actually pose much threat right now, and that is a problem. That's something that we do need to address. So I'll have some words with Aeneas, but let me know in the comments if you happen to have any ideas on what kind of ideally motion-based uh, methodology we can use to make the ship the uh, the shipwrights or maybe the, or maybe explicitly the harbor master a bit more of a pain to deal with, because right now all we have are disruption kind of stack kind of tactics. A few of these will do some damage most of the time, but most of these are actually just going to debilitate the harm the uh, enemies of the harbor master. So, let me know. Hmm. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I now have at least one kind of uh, randomizer set up here. Let me know if you think I should go for up to free or one of free with the denials. And other than that, I've just got to set up a actual ability selector, which we saw in the previous dungeon uh, with the Grand Archivist. And... Hmm. If you don't know how to set that up, by the way, I did make a Book of Lying tutorial on that, so you can go check that out. But otherwise, hope you've enjoyed. Apologies for the slightly late video, and I shall catch you all next time.